director's report. Um, a couple of things that we're going to talk about. Um, um, what I want to talk about is the strategic plan update and then also our personnel policy and procedure manual to give you an update on that. We have received a draft draft copy and we have reviewed through, we've made some revisions. I'm working with Megan to get those finalized and once we get that finalized, I'll take it back to the personnel committee to for final review. Um, and then also with the strategic plan update. Ms. Troy, let me make one comment about that manual. I, I know you guys have worked very diligently on this, but you've got several people on this board who have some degree of expertise in some of the aspects of personnel management. Would you make sure that the board has a copy of that prior to bringing it to the meeting so that we can you know, make comments so that we don't use the meeting as an opportunity to, to, to try and alter the manual change? Certainly. Um, just to kind of give you an update, we spoke to Rotary this month, also met with the mayor and Larry Hanson to discuss economic development and their role from the city and um, partnership with the industrial authority. The mayor and I both attended GEDA yesterday, the luncheon, which was held at Kia Motors facility in West Point, Georgia. So that was a great meeting. We were able to tour the facility and meet um, key individuals with the economic development bill. Now to kind of go back to the strategic plan and to bring you an update um, in your packets that you have in front of you um, you've got some proposals and originally when we embarked upon the strategic plan process um, we weren't aware of things that were taking place throughout the community of other organizations looking towards moving forward in a strategic plan envisioning process as well so with that occurring i think it's best for us to hold off for a little while to be a part of that but still continue in developing some tools we need as an organization to better recruit and market ourselves within the economic development field. Um, one of those things that we really need um, from data and information is identifying our target markets and those um, we would look at that by doing a target business analysis that will help us identify business sectors that represent the greatest opportunity for us to create a sustainable economy. Um, we requested three proposals, and you have those in front of you, that are three target business analysis proposals. Um, and then I've given you a little snapshot of what those are. Um, and just to kind of walk you a little bit before we get into the details, to walk you a little bit through the process, is um, we would select a leadership team that can comprise of board members, government, and other um, economic professionals in the education sector within our community to be a part of the leadership team that would help advise and offer feedback throughout this process. And this is approximately a three to four month process that we would um, be taking on. So we've got a final um, document that we could use. Um, there'll be interviews with individuals throughout the community, especially those within those three fields we just talked about. Um, and they'll take those comments into consideration when doing this. Um, and they'll also do some other um, data research, target, cluster, target market and clusters. They'll look at all that and uh, do a whole data reference. That a dump, I guess you could say, in demographic profile, community assessment, and doing this process. So what I've done and what you've got in front of you is these are the three individuals that submitted proposals. We have one from Market Street Services, Janice Economics, which is Robert Pittman, that presented to us back in February. January, February, I can't remember. January. Which, January. And then Georgia Tech Enterprise Innovation Institute. Um, the X's mean these are the products and the deliverables that we would get from them and where you see not applicable are things that would, would not be included at this price or within the proposal. So all of them are going to do interviews with communi key community stakeholders and industry research based on what our MSA looks like and our existing industry base. So that's going to be provided by both. All of them will deliver a business, target business analysis which takes into account our current existing industries and looking for target sectors that have the greatest opportunity for growth and to help us raise the median income. 
where we run into some differences are with the labor market analysis. And this is a tool that we really feel from a staff perspective that is extremely valuable to us to really take a look at what our current workforce is and how we match that to the target sector that we're going after to make sure that if we can't have a pharmaceutical, we, do we have enough chemists here to fulfill, the, to fill those positions type thing. Um, so that would be included in the Market Street Services and the Janus Economics. And then geographic advantages, we would get some of that through the Janus Economics proposal, but we're going to get a lot more out of it out of the Market Street Services. And then in addition to Market Street Services, there is an option for us to really do a marketing review, which we're going to talk about um, in depth as well in just a second. Um, Janus Economics will make recommendations on how we can utilize the data that we just got to help market um, those industries to the cluster, you know, industry slash clusters uh, based on our location advantages, which we would also be getting from a more in depth from Market Street. Um, I'll give you a little opportunity to, to look at this. Um, but also to kind of give you the marketing review and to tell you a little bit about what's currently going on with our organization, we had a little snafu with our website last week. And here's basically the, I have to look at things to kind of give you all the whole space. Uh, I'm going to do the best I can. Here we go. Our website was done about three or four years ago, and it was written with Joomla. 1.8, which is a contact man content management, and Splice Media is our actually host, our <coughs> server host. Well, to put it into perspective, Joomla is at four, is operating at 5.0, just like Windows 7 or whatever. Um, we're operating at a 1.8. So the code that we have on our website is extremely old and is not keeping up with the server that we have right now. So that's the opportunity. That's the that's the reason we're at where we are right now and why our website isn't up. We found that out today. So what we've done is contacted Splice Media and said, we need you to go back and do whatever you did, redo, fix whatever you did to get our site back up and running with the accurate information. So that's what they're doing. So we can fix it temporarily to where our website is up and running and working, but we have to seriously take a look at our website because it's going to continue to have these issues because we aren't, we aren't up to date on content management. So we either basically need to scrap our website and start all over again because even if we try to upgrade the Joomla to 5.0, we've done that before and it completely crashed. So as it stands, and I, I looked the last couple of days, all one can access is basically the agenda on the website. Not after we go back, not after Splice Media goes back and reverts it back to the 2.5. I'm talking about for the last few days. Right. That, that's Correct. all one could because I, I made an effort to look thinking that it was going to come up tonight. Yes. So um, the public has still noticed what our agenda is and when our meetings are. They can today, yes. Yeah. But what they see is they see half a page. So they see, right. Just they see like deprecated. Actually, it's not even a half a page. Right. Yeah. They see like code written over here, That's and right. then throughout the website, they see a mix of code and words. And we're no. getting that fixed and should have that fixed within two to 24 hours. Okay. But we can do a temporary fix until we get an RFP out to rebuild our website and get it up to date. And this temporary fix will provide all the information that one could get prior to the breakdown. Correct. And Including prospect information? The prospector website? Yes. Okay, the prospector website is completely separate. Okay, so, so let's, you know, can we talk about in terms of meetings and administration, what's out there, but this has not affected mm -hmm. a prospect who's looking for us for anything having to do with yes, any it of has. that. Oh, right. I mean, yeah, so when they pull up industrialauthority.com, yeah, they go to our website, that, nothing comes yeah. up. There's okay. just code. Um, if they were to look, I mean, the only other website we have that's connected through the Industrial Authority is Valdosta Prospector, well, ValdostaProspector.com. That's where you pull up all our sites and our buildings and our demographics, et cetera. So, 
one the couple of options that we've looked at was if we weren't able to get them to revert back to the old code to get our website back the way it was, we were going to shut down the site and put up a splash page with site under maintenance, very limited information, and then move it out, and then direct them to the prospector site for sites and buildings and demographic information. But now that we can get them to go back to the old code and get our site back for a temporary fix, we'll continue down that path. And that will happen when? Within the next two to 24 hours, if it's not already happened. That was okay. this afternoon. All right. Did anybody have any questions? I know that was probably a lot more in-depth information. Than <laughs> so, so what I think we're hearing is we need to immediately get on an RFP process to redo our... Website. Yeah, and you're going to find out when we go through public relations and communication that's already in the works. So Megan has already put together an RFP that we're working on reviewing right now that hopefully we'll have posted in April. Um, and we can come back to that and I can give so you all some more information. Works because we were already in the process of developing a new right. mm -hmm. So we've been doing some foresight into what we need to do prior to the end of 2012 coming up on our next fiscal budget and what we want to ask for on a budget from the finance committee. <laughs> and so this would be one of those that we would build into um, the beginning of our fiscal year in July. And we're moving with all deliberate speed and caution to rectify this problem. Absolutely. And we, I mean, Megan is currently in Atlanta and she's been on the phone with Will, Mark, trying to work through this. Now, is this a situation where we, we might need to call in any outside expertise to get this going any faster. In, in what regards? To, um, the, to the fix or to Yeah, to, to do the temporary fix. No, I mean, we've called in all our experts. All so the geek squads and all of those. Yeah, folks. so basically okay. what we did, did was we have um, a website consultant that's been working with us okay. through some changes anyway, and we've put them in contact with our Knowledge Concepts, who does all of our web hosting and our emails and our just IT service anyway. So they're talking together. They are talking to Splice Media and G1, et cetera. So that's how we came to that fix that we've got right now. <laughs> so I want, so that kind of goes, the reason I told y'all that 